Welcome, welcome, welcome to Naturally Innovative. This is Sequita Bonsu bringing you another spiritual based video. I know it's been a long time and God has really spoke to me about this channel and how I should really go about doing it. And I should focus more so on the spiritual aspect of it because we have so many channels out there that's already doing the, the natural hair and skin care and working out and all of this stuff and, you know, and um, doing the, you know, shopping hauls and all of those things. And so, of course, I want to incorporate some of those things because those are things that I like. And so when you immerse yourself into the Bible and the scriptures, you really get to see another side of who God truly is and be spiritually awakened. And that is truly what is happening to me. I'm not perfect and I don't pretend to try to be. But at the end of the day, I'm going to seek correction in my life. And I also am going to... Um, encourage other people to seek correction as well because I want them to do the same for me. I want to be around people who are like-minded who can encourage me with the gospel. So enough of all of that. So today is five ways that you can walk in the spirit and I'm bringing you the scriptures and I just basically just kind of you know a little research and just trying to find something that's going to be of substance to you influencer. I'm going to call you guys my influencers. You, the influencer, who can be influenced by the word of God. So the first thing I'm going to say is eliminating distractions will be a great way to start walking and um, walking with Christ. And so the scripture I have for that is Hebrews 12 and 1. This light oh, is so bright. I don't know how people do this. Anyway, okay, so Hebrews 12, 1 tells us, Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every weight and, and the sin that is so easily snars us, and let us run with endurance the race that lies before us. And so, so my first way of walking, to walk in the spirit, is eliminating distractions and accept correction. So telling us the danger of sin, the danger of being in the flesh, basically. And so this one, the first one reminded us that, um, you know, we have to have endurance. And when you think of endurance when like working out and being physically active, I think about how like, you know, like you, you're working out to increase your endurance. So your ability to be able to withstand more and more. And the more you work out, the better it is for you. And then you're not breathing heavily and you're not, you know, struggling to get through the workout because your endurance is increasing. Come on, somebody. Y'all better y'all better preach with me. Um, so that's the way I looked at that scripture. And then, of course, he told us to lay aside the sin. You know, those things that is a distraction to us. So you speaking foolishly, you saying the word is not, God is not real, and Jesus is not alive, and you don't have belief in God, that's foolish talk. Because you don't understand spiritual things because you haven't, you haven't graduated to be spiritual, you know, like you're still in the flesh. So of course I can't, you can't, you would understand, you know, kind of thing. And so we have to eliminate those distractions. We have to eliminate that, those things that causes us to be divided from God and separated from him, listening to people, uh, gossiping, being jealous. All of these things is not like God. So cut it out y'all for real and accept the correction of the Lord. Keep in mind the things of holiness. Yeah, I got my notes. Keeps me, you know, organized. Keep in mind things of holiness. So keep your mind on things that is gonna help you grow in the spirit. You know, keep your mind on godliness and godly thoughts and holiness. And uh, my second point is walking with, walking with God leads to you being able to sow a seed. When you sow seeds, when we think uh, metaphorically, when God talks about sowing seeds, you know, we know that when you sow a seed into a garden, it's going to produce something. Something's going to come from that garden. 
as long as you take care of it. As long as you water it, whatever, if you're planting uh, vegetables or fruit or if you're planting plants, you know, something beautiful is going to come from that. You have to plant the seeds in your life. So you have to do the dirty work. You know, God says that the harvest is plenty, but there's not very, there's only a few laborers. So what that means to me is there's not many people out in the field working. You know, people are not laying the ground for their families. They're not praying. They're not seeking the Lord. They're not uh, fasting and, 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 and being available to be used by him. And so you suffer. And so the scripture I have for that is just Galatians 5, 22 and 23. I don't know this one by heart. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. <laughs> so we have to practice those things. Not only that, you have to keep God's commandments. It's a lot that goes into having a relationship with God. I'm sure you guys hear this all the time. It's more than just praying. It's more than just fasting. It's more than just, you know, all of those things. It's literally practicing those things. You have to have self-control. You have to seek God so that you can have wisdom and discernment. You can respond to people in a godly way. I know it sounds like it's so much, but it's really not. It's just being careful of how you're presenting yourself. You know, we're supposed to be ambassadors of Christ. We're supposed to be looking out for God's best interests and pleasing him in the midst of whatever circumstance. Doesn't matter. My third point, surrender to his will. And the scripture I have for that is... James 4, James 4, 7 through 8, it says, oh, yeah. 7 through 8 says, therefore submit to God, but resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 8 says, draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Um, Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So, there it is, right there, you know. In order to surrender to God's will, we have to walk with God. We have to resist the devil and he will flee from you. We surrender to God. We submit. People hate that word. Submit to God. That means be obedient to his voice. Draw near to him. Like just how we was talking about drawing near means starting to plant that seeds so that you can grow in the word. Double minded can be like a lukewarm Christian. It's like you don't know what you want to do. You're over here and then you're over there. You know, like like God talked about those people. He said, you know, those are people like um, everywhere the wind blows, they blow. You know, you don't want to be like that. You want to have a, a narrow mindset about what you want to do in Christ. And it's important that you pursue him. So when he said draw near to him and he was draw near to you, it's a give and take. You give a little, he give you a little, you know? So that's my third one, surrender into the will of God. And you'll be obedient when he tell you to go and talk to that sister or that brother over there and encourage them with the word of God. Or when you're on a bus somewhere and God tell you to speak to somebody about Christ and tell them that I love them, you got to do it. When he tell you to pray for that person, they need healing, you got to do it. You know, when he say, close your mouth, don't say nothing. Don't respond to that person. You got to do it. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a learning process. The next one is pray without ceasing. Number four. To be able to walk in the spirit, you have to pray without ceasing. And we kind of covered praying, how important it is already. But a scripture that I have was um, Jude one twenty. You see, I'm in my pajamas. This is a relaxed kind of, we're just talking, you know. Like, please comment, you know, about how you feel about the video. Did it help you? Did I help somebody? Influencers, let me know. <laughs> you want to see more of this? Jude 120 says this. But you, dear friends, as you build yourself up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. 
oh and 21 keep yourself in the love of god expecting the mercy of our lord jesus christ for eternal life pray he said in the holy spirit did y'all hear that part the end of 20 now we all know what praying in the holy spirit is right and if you don't praying in the holy spirit means praying in tongues you know obviously it's not for you it's for god to hear god to understand so um that's how i've always understood praying in the holy spirit or they say praying in tongues praying the holy spirit praying in tongues so you know god is another scripture where it says god tells us to pray without ceasing and he also tells us to pray in the holy spirit at all times now of course we can't pray from sun up to sundown every minute of the day but to me it means just being conscious of god so sometimes i'll find myself just randomly saying hallelujah if i feel like i haven't prayed in a few hours or whatever hallelujah thank you jesus thank you god you are holy you are worthy you know stuff like that like edifying just like you edify yourself you say you know i'm an imperfect human but i'm getting better i'm doing this better I, i'm so talented i'm so creative that, that's how we have to speak to god you're so good, God. You're so merciful. You're gracious. You have to do it daily. He also told us to be thankful in all things. Or I think that's the verse, how it goes. Be thankful for everything. And so thanking him is praying. It's availing yourself so that he can speak to us, okay? Can I get an amen? <laughs> so, yeah. Do I have another one? First Thessalonians 5.16. I know this one. Oh, I already covered that. The pray without ceasing. And be thankful in all things. I think that is um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 17. And then my last one, y'all. Number five is faith in the unknown. Faith in the unknown. All right. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. So we have faith. Um, if you haven't seen the show Underground, I would definitely recommend you watch it. It was very powerful and it was a moment with, um, spoiler alert, uh, Harriet was talking to the guy, I forget his name um, right now, but Noah, I think he was, and she was basically telling him, you know, he was just basically saying, like, you want to believe in her God, but it's just hard. You can't see him, you know? It's hard to believe. And he said, how, she was saying something along the lines of, how did you know that you were supposed to be free? He said, I just I just knew. He said, and who you think carries you those 600 miles? You know, kind of thing. And that was like powerful. The way she said it, you have to watch it. But it was just powerful basically saying like, you just knew. You had faith that you were not supposed to be a slave for the rest of your life. And I just think that part was so powerful to me because that's believing in God. It's though I know, I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but I have to trust God anyway, that he's going to provide, that he says he's going to be a prote our protector, that he's going to guard us. And people always think that that means that nothing bad is ever going to happen to you. No, that's not the case. You know, it just means what it, what it says. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will not fear evil because evil is always lurking. Things are going to happen. You're going to get sick. You might fall. You might hurt yourself. Somebody might die that you didn't want to die. You know, things happen. You might not be financially stable as you want to. Things happen, but you have to trust God anyway because every season is, is it's a season in your life. That don't mean it's going to last always, you know? So I just want to encourage you guys today with the word. Um, the other scripture I had was Romans 3.25. You're welcome to read it. I mean, I could read it to y'all if y'all want. I don't mind. It's because I like talking <laughs> to a camera. Because <laughs> nobody's here. Okay, but Romans 3.25. I read it and then, you know, just cut this video short. Hallelujah. Um, Romans 3.25. God presented himself as a propitiation through faith in his blood to demonstrate his righteousness because in his restraint God passed over the sins previously committed. Yeah. 
propitiation through faith in his blood to demonstrate his righteousness because in his restraint God passed over the sins previously committed. Oh, and it says propitiation is like an offering of atonement or as a mercy seat. So that's why we need to have faith in him because he offered his body as a living sacrifice so that we all can be saved. You know, he gave us the greatest example of how to be sacrificial. And that is a part of walking with Christ, is being sacrificial and learning how to have faith and learning how to eliminate distractions, learning how to plant the seeds in your life, surrendering to his will and praying without ceasing. It's all a part of the direction that God wants us to go so that we will always be walking with him. It's so many more steps to it, but I just want to cover these five. Thank you so much for watching. I love y'all so much. Let me just pray quickly. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, oh God, for this video. I pray that you will touch the lives of your people. Each and every person who come across this video will be blessed in the name of Jesus. I pray that they will seek you first, the kingdom of God. They will follow in your steps, oh God. They will pursue you and submit to your way. Help them to be obedient. Help them to be submissive. Help them, oh God, to grab, grab a hold of what you want to speak to them. Let them be sensitive to the voice of God and to listen to you, O oh God, and draw near to you so you can draw near to them. Let them have faith of a mustard seed and, and childlike faith in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank you so much for watching Influences. <laughs>